Then, so to be able to add, as I said, about 95 projects, 95%, 95 percent of our ultrasound pathologies, these four factors are very important or crucial. The clinical history of the patient. And then for the clinical history, you have gender, you have age, vices, and then occupation. Gender. Why is it so important? Gender qualifies if an individual is a male or what? A female. And why is it so important? There are certain pathologies that are more prevalent in males, but not in females. Why? Because they do not have same or similar structures. A male patient who is complaining about low abdominal pain may not be diagnosed of fibromyoma because males do not have what? Uterus. When there's more in what? Females. Likewise, a female patient also complaining about low abdominal pain may not be diagnosed of what? Prostate enlargement because these structures are not what? In, in females. Okay? So knowing this, uh, this can help you to know the kind of pathology you are supposed to what, see in, in those individuals or those kind of groups. Okay? Now, age, that is the discrepancy between the biological age and then the passport age. For some individuals, sorry to say, they have been taking a lot of alcohol. So they are now 20 years, but when you see them, you, you, can, you, can, you can see that they are, they are around um, 55 or 60 years. Okay? That is what we say, and send it the photo. Okay? That is okay. okay, that's the discrepancy. They are youths, they are young. But they have, they have been in some fights, they have been taking alcohol, alcohol, um, Indian hemp, and then a whole lot. And then they have been abusing them, and when you see them, you can see that, you know, this guy, there's something wrong with this guy. Okay, so the age is important. The vices, as I said, also important, and then the occupation. That is, I think that's one more in the x ray, x ray film. Okay. Now, echogenicity. What is echogenicity? Then we are talking about the internal echoes generated by our tissues. Is it hypoechoic? Is it hyperechoic? Is it isoechoic? Okay. So these things. Now, tissues with high intensity of echoes are known as what? Hyperbreak. Tissues with high intensity of echoes. And therefore, they appear bright on ultrasound. So, what are those structures? The one that we just raised them. Bones, one. Metallic, like intrauterine contraceptive devices, metallic implants, or surgical clips. They all appear what? Hyperquicacoli, or stones will appear hyperquicacoli on ultrasound. And then hyperquic. Okay. And then tissues with lower intensity of echoes. Hyperquic. Tissues with similar or same intensity of echoes, iso echoes. So iso echoes to this. So we compare hyper hypo to, for example, when the pain deliver, slightly hyper echoes. Okay, and then we have dark something in it. And then we are saying that this region of this mass is hyper echoes. It means that the main reference point is what the liver. So this mass is hyperbole when compared to the parenchyma of the liver. We are comparing what is within the liver to that of what the surroundings. That is the main liver parenchyma. So this one is what hyperbole. Hyperbole to what? To the liver because that is the main point of what? Comparison. So we compare hypo hyper to what? Organs in reference. Okay? And then another way, black. Absence of echoes. Okay. Echo texture. How smooth or how rough it is. So we talk about homogeneous. Fine echoes. Okay. And then heterogeneous. 
and then the dimensions. Dimensions, why is it not necessary? We have standard, okay? We have various sizes, the ranges. So if it is, the size is greater than expected, then it means signifies what? A pathology. And then if it is more or less lesser or smaller, then it may also what? Signifies a pathology. So we classify these things. How do we describe pathologies? We are continuing from here. We have the shape. Is it round? Is it over? Do we have finger like projections on it? Spiculations. Or speculations. That is the shape. Can we see the deviation on the mass? Yes, we can see. Here is it. If we can see, then we can measure that it is from here to what? Here. Okay. So dimension is also very important. So okay, we have our dimension here. Dimension. Okay. What are the walls? How does the walls look like? Is it well defined? So for the walls, we talk about what well defined, ill defined. Or regular or irregular. When we are saying we say a least a mass is well defined. Look at this one. A. And then B. Okay, what do you see? What can you say about this one? This this is well defined and then ill defined. Which one is well defined? A. Or what the denominator? Okay, why? Well, the walls are intact. Yeah. Okay. So when we have any lesion that we cannot clearly identify all the walls, some of the walls are missing. It becomes irregular, ill-defined. But for this one, we can, we can see exactly the whole shape. For example, a simple cystic mass, the whole shape. Okay. The whole walls, well-defined, thin walls. Okay. But this one, we can see that some of the borders are what? Missing. So they are what? Irregular or ill-defined. Okay. So this one we also talk about locations. Locations on the walls. Okay. And then the location is also very important. Location of the lesion. So Okay, the location, okay, very important. So, if this is the liver, we have the right, the left loop, and then we have the what? The right loop, okay. So, we can see that the lesion is not in the left loop, but rather in the left loop. Is it right? Sorry, right loop, okay. Is it round or over? So, now let's describe it. This, it is hyperbole, okay. So, very schematic. Let me pass some from here. It is very small. Okay. Now, about 98% of the whole liver parenchyma is homogeneous. Okay. Though this one is trying to make it heterogeneous. So we talk about the vessels in the liver. We talk about the loops. Okay. And then we learned that anatomically, the liver is divided into what? Four main loops. So we have two main loops and then two accessory loops. The main loops, we talk about right loop, the left loop. And then the accessory loop, we talk about the caudate loop and then the fabric loop. And then we went on to, uh, to say that within the loops, we have lobules. And then within each lobules, we have hepatocytes. And then these hepatocytes, they are responsible for what? Producing bile and other chemical processes within the liver. Okay. We also talk about the ducts within the loop, the liver. We talk about the left loop, the left hepatic duct draining 
the bile from the left side, and then the right side is also draining bile from the from the right right lower of the liver. And they all meet at the common place called the common hepatic duct. Okay, so I am the left hepatic duct. I'm taking mine from here. You are the right. You are also taking yours from here. And then we all meet at the common place here, common hepatic duct. Is that also? And then we have our bad bladder somewhere around here. We have our cystic duct here, the common hepatic duct. Okay, as in that order. So we have the loops, we have vessels. Now, we have vessels that are sending blood to the liver, and those that are taking blood, uh, that are taking blood and then by the way from what? The liver. We talk about the hepatic artery, and then we said the hepatic artery is a branch of the celiac artery, that is the first branch of the abdominal aorta, terminating from the anterior side. Okay, we know that the celiac trunk or the celiac artery will bifurcate into thread, into vessels, these vessels. The left gastric artery supplying blood toward the left part of the stomach. And then the splenic artery supplying oxidated blood to the, to the spleen. And then uh, the, the common hepatic artery, the hepatic artery, also supplying oxidated blood towards the liver. Okay, now, just the evidence that when the hepatic artery enters into the liver. It was bifurcate or divided into the left and then the right. And then the left side is supplying oxidated blood, the left loop, and then the right side. And then when it enters or terminates into each of the loop, it's also divided into small, small, smaller arteries that supply all parts of what? The liver. Okay, so the artery, the hepatic artery is bringing oxidated blood. And then the portal veins are also bringing deoxygenated venous blood into the liver. So this one is bringing in, in uh, hepatic artery. And then the portal veins are also bringing on deoxygenated venous blood into the liver. Are you okay? I hope this thing is getting you all these things. Uh -huh. Okay. Deoxygenated venous blood for the liver to process them. After all those processes, the IVs, the hepatic veins, the left, the middle, and the right hepatic veins will carry all of them away into what? The IVC. Okay, from the IVC to the right side of the heart, and then eventually into the pulmonary, the lungs for oxidation to what to take place. Okay, and then and then we also have the bile, also draining the biliary system, also draining those bile. Okay, so those are taking it out, and then these ones are also what bringing them what in. Okay, so normal ultrasound report on the liver. One. You can write start it this way. Epogenicity, epogenicity, dimension. Okay, let's start with the epogenicity. The liver is of what? Normal epogenicity. We are not talking about this one. The liver is of what? Normal epogenicity. With epogenicity. Homogeneous. Measuring let's say 13 centimeters in the mid clavicular line, depending on where you took your image. Now you are done with epidemic, this and that, and then the dimension is the size normal or abnormal. We stay that it's here. We don't have a problem. Okay. We also have, we know that we have vessels and then within the liver. Are they dilated? Are the hepatic duct dilated or they are normal? We also have to state. Because dilatation of these hepatic duct may cause what? Processes, jaundice and other pathologies within the patient. So, let's comment on these things. Portal veins and hepatic veins, they are also part of the liver. Are they normal? Because dilated portal veins greater than 30 to 15 millimeters may signify what? Portal hypertension. So if they are all within the normal limit, let's, let's also state them. Because any effect with these vessels may cause what? Non-compliance, okay, and then cause more problems. So portal veins and hepatic veins.